from the JAG TV studios at the University of South Alabama, broadcasting in HD. Your on campus news starts now. Hello, Jaguars. I'm Bree Burrell. And I'm Jackie Roch. Tonight we'll have news, Jag life, and sports. You're watching The Vanguard on Air. Over the past few years, the university has been booming with renovations and new building projects. No matter if you're standing on the north side of campus near the chemistry building or closer to the center surrounding the Bethel, work crews and heavy machinery fill both areas. As of now, there are several buildings which have already completed the renovation process, Epsilon II, the Student Center, and Siemens Bethel. All these renovations were made due as each building had reached its life expectancy and were simply in need of upgrades. Faculty Court East is currently under renovations and will receive new finishes after being left by the engineering department when Shelby Hall was completed. The chemistry building is also being rebricked due to the bricks not being assembled correctly in the initial build. Students can expect further renovations to come. The Life Sciences Building, Auditorium, and two large classrooms in the Visual Arts Complex are scheduled to be remodeled in the near future. In dealing with parking, however, President Tony Waldrop expressed that he does not want to waste any more ground or money on parking until necessary. This construction all across campus is being completed in strides, and these renovations are making structures safer for increased student activity. For more information, pick up a Vanguard located around campus. Do you have an upcoming fun event you'd like to promote to USA students? JAG TV, our student TV channel, would like your event on weekend warm-up. This show informs students about events and happenings on and around campus, particularly, but not exclusively, on the weekend. Weekend warm-up airs on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and again on Friday and Saturday. Anyone who'd like his or her event included on the broadcast must email a blurb about the event by the previous Monday. The email should include any pertinent information as well as which Thursday you would like it to air. Blurbs may be reworded and edited and inclusion is by the discretion of the host. Priority will be given to school sponsored events and please no regular club meetings. Send emails to jagtvusa at gmail.com with weekend warm up in the subject line. This is an ongoing weekly show, so even if you do not have an event right now, keep them in mind for later. Are you a star performer just waiting for your time to shine? Do you have a special talent such as music, poetry, or stand-up comedy? Then stop waiting and head over to the Satori Coffee House for open mic night. Satori is conveniently located down the street from USA's campus and offers a great atmosphere for those wanting a cozy place to study or a night of music. Laughter and fun. If you don't have a talent to perform at open mic night, don't worry. You can still be a part of the supportive and fun environment that is Satori Coffee House. Swing by an open mic night Thursday starting at 7 p.m. to showcase your talent or just to enjoy great food, drinks, and the company of others. The City of Mobile has proposed a new 2015 budget that could cut up up to $2 million in performance contracts impacting arts and culture services throughout Mobile. Performance contracts provide particular organizations funding for services that the city needs. Contracts go to organizations ranging from social services to arts and culture. Mayor Sandy Stimson stated in a recent press release on the budget that they can no longer sustain previous years' funding levels and make headway on capital projects. Many events and organizations are under the control of the Mobile Arts Council, such as the Mobile Ar Opera, Gulf Coast Explorium, Bay Fest, and the Mobile Ballet. All of these are funded by the city budget, and one event in jeopardy is the Art Walk in downtown Mobile. During a public budget hearing, arts and culture's funding quickly took a back seat to service providers such as independent living programs, the Salvation Army, School of Math and Science, and Boys and Girls Club. Other budget concerns discussed included pay raises for city employees, an increase in discretionary funds for the city council, a temporary sales tax increase, and a 400% increase in funding for capital projects. The proposed budget takes effect in the new fiscal year for the city, which begins October 1st. Making it across campus to class, finishing up a last-minute assignment, or cramming in a last-minute study session can, make, can easily surpass lunch planning as a concern. 
One of the ways the University of South Alabama attempts to relieve some of that stress, at least concerning food, is with meal plans. Although meal plans are required for on-campus residents, the plans are also available for off-campus students and part-time students, providing a convenient lunch option. According to Michael Brown, the district ma marketing manager for Aramark, off-campus students have shown increasing interest in meal plans over the last few years, accounting for 7% rise in plan purchases since last semester. The increase can be attributed to the addition of new meal plans specifically designed for commuter students, such as the Daily 8. This meal plan provides students with an all-you-can-eat fresh food company meal per day, as well as $8 at, that can be used at any of the South's other dining locations. Another option is the all-access JAG Pass meal plan, which provides an unlimited number of meals per week at the Fresh Food Company, as well as $175 in bonus bucks. The bonus bucks program is offered to students as either a supplementary or standalone meal plan option. Students can add as many dollars as they feel necessary to their bucks account. The all-access JAG meal plan is currently the fourth lowest costing all-access meal plan in the state below Auburn, Alabama, and UAB. For more information on meal plan price comparison, pick up a Vanguard newspaper located on stands around campus. And next up, we'll have information on how to get involved around campus and how to help out USA organizations by eating at restaurants like Five Guys and Chipotle. And I'll have more on how you can win some USA merchandise as well as other prizes coming up next on the Vanguard On Air. Are you looking for a way to get involved at the University of South Alabama? Student Activities wants you to get involved on campus. Student Activities are here to help you find which organization is right for you. They have over 200 student organizations at USA and encourage you to consider membership in one that interests you. Along with joining a student organization, they also help with starting a new organization, joining a sorority or fraternity, and renewing your organization's registration. According to their university flyer, the Office of Student Activities strives to enrich the academic mission, professional development, and social aspects of the college experience. Through connecting and engaging students in campus organizations, they teach academic integrity, social diversity, and ethical leadership. Become involved in a student organization today by contacting the Office of Student Activities. Only into the sixth week of classes and preparation for next semester is quickly approaching. Spring semester 2015 advising for continuing and readmitted students begins this Thursday the 25th and continues throughout the rest of September into October. As a reminder to all of you seniors suffering from the infamous senioritis, you must check in with your advisor for your graduation application two terms before your expected completion of degree requirements. Also beginning this Thursday, time tickets will be posted for spring 2015 registration. You can view the time ticket through your Paul's account and get an early start on preparations for the spring 2015 semester. Have you met our new president, Tony Waldrop? You could take a picture with him for the Do South Magazine contest and win. Take a photo with the president and win a chance at USA merchandise, gift cards from local vendors, and lunch with the president, Waldrop. This week's hashtag Who's Waldrop question is family. Ask USA President Tony Waldrop your own questions or questions like where did you and your wife meet? Or what careers did your children get into? Remember, if you spot President Waldrop out, ask him a question to get to know him. In return, he'll take a photo with you for your posts on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram with hashtag Who's Waldrop for a chance to win some great prizes. Only students will be entered into the contest, but faculty, staff, and community members are encouraged to take a photo with the president as well. The Music Business Student Association is on. The USA Group is here for you to get involved and gain the experience in the many aspects of the music industry. Music is not just isolated to performing, teaching, or composing. Careers in music also consist of manufacturing, retailing, repair, service, law, marketing, and more. Many times, people consider going into music and never realize the best opportunity for them. The MBSA goal is to investigate these opportunities by bringing them to the USA campus as well as going to where the opportunities exist. Being a member of the MBSA is simple and worthwhile in building a portfolio for career opportunities. Don't miss the next MBSA meeting at 7 p.m. in Laidlaw. 
As most of us may know, this past summer, South Alabama tragically lost a great, spirit-filled student and a terrific friend. Greg Florian was not only a student worker for the Recreation Center, he was involved in his community in many ways. You may know him as Napoleon Dynamite at sporting events. He always showed up to cheer on his Jags and interact with the crowd and character. Greg and his brother David tragically drowned this past summer when they were swept off a sandbar by the current. Neither brother knew how to swim. In their memory, the Campus Recreation Aquatics Program would like to offer students the opportunity to learn how to swim free of charge in the first annual Greg Florian Swim for Life. A survey conducted by the American Red Cross found that only 2% of adults plan to take swim lessons this summer. The first annual Greg Florian Swim for Life Memorial, a four-week adult swim, swim lesson class, began last week, Monday through Thursday, 5 to 5.45 and 6 to 6.45, and is being offered free to all South Alabama students. Camp Kasem, a national nonprofit organization, just opened a new chapter at USA. Camp Kasem is a nation, nationwide community driven by passionate college student leaders and su that support children through and beyond their parents' cancer. They raise money to send children ages 6 to 16 who have or had parents with cancer to a week of camp for free. USA is not the only campus that just opened their first chapter. The next three states over, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas, all recently adopted the Camp Kasem organization into their community. This Thursday, eating at the Chipotle on airport will benefit our chapter. 50% of the profits made from 5 to 8 p.m. will go to CKUSA. So come hungry and bring your friends. If you would like to know more information about Camp Kasem, visit the national website at www.campkasem.org or our chapter website, www.campkasem.org slash South Alabama, and like them on Facebook. Are you looking for opportunities to help out your fellow college students? How about enjoying delicious Five Guys while raising money for a student organization? If you do not have dinner plans this Wednesday, September 24th, please join South Alabama's Pre-Health Society, Alpha Epsilon Delta, at Five Guys on Airport Boulevard anytime from 4 to 10 p.m. A percentage of all pur purchases will help AED organize more events and send our members to a national convention next year. No student IDs or flyers are required. Just stop by and enjoy some food while helping out AED. I'll make sure I go there. Love, yeah. a, love a five guys. <laughs> that's really good. They know how to get college kids food. That's how you get them. Coming up next, we'll have this week's sports with our very own Alyssa Newton. Stay tuned. Hello, Jag Nation. I'm Alyssa Newton, and this is your South Alabama Sports Report. South Alabama soccer is on a four-game winning streak after defeating Mississippi State and Alabama A&M on the road. Friday, September 12th, the Jaguars traveled to Starkville, Mississippi to face the Bulldogs. Freshman Sharda Hannah's Brace sealed the Jags win over the SEC's Mississippi State 2-0. USA's goalkeeper Sarah Hay had a standout performance in the match, making six saves to help secure the Jags' fifth shutout this month. The Jags then traveled to Normal, Alabama to face Alabama A&M Bulldogs. Alabama A&M scored in the first yeah. Scored first in the 17th minute of the match, only to be answered by six straight goals by the Jags. USA's Sharda Hanna was the first to score in the 35th minute, giving her eight goals on the season. South Alabama would then defeat Alabama A&M 6-2, improving 6-2 on the season. South Alabama Volleyball went 3-1 in the Marine Classic in Starkville, Mississippi, defeating Mississippi State, Northwestern State, and Nickel State, only losing to University of Memphis. Emily Hunt and Nikki Gittens were named to the Marine Classic All-Tournament squad. The Jaguars opened conference play with a 3-2 win over undefeated Louisiana Lafayette. USA was led by Jessica Lewis with 17 kills and two solo blocks. Michelle Daniel recorded her fifth double-double on the season with 14 kills and 13 digs. The Jaguars are now 6-5 on the season and will host Georgia State on Sunday, September 21st in the Jaguar Gym. South Alabama football had its first record-breaking crowd against Mississippi State, but the Jags were unable to capitalize on early opportunities, losing 35-3. Mississippi State quarterback Dak Prescott and the Bulldog offense racked up 514 yards against the Jags offensively. Prescott completed 13 of 21 passes for 201 yards and a touchdown. Prescott ran for a season best of 139 yards on 14 attempts. Brennan Bridge went on 
21 of 39 passes for 203 yards with one interception. Wide receiver Jeremy Jones matched a career high of seven receptions for, 37, for 76 yards. Excuse me. Defensively, Malik Harris made 14 tackles and forced two fumbles. Terrell Brigham and Devin Hawkins recorded nine stops each. The lone score would come from a 26-yard field goal by Aleem Sunanen, the kicker of South Alabama. And South Alabama will face Georgia Southern Saturday, September 20th at 6 p.m. Make sure you follow the Vanguard Sports play-by-play -play on Twitter at USAVG Sports. Finally, we have our JAG Athletes of the Week. South Alabama had four athletes recognized last week at the Sun as Sunbelt Players of the Week in their respective sports. Malik Harris earned a Defensive Player of the Week after his performance against Mississippi State on September 13th in front of a program record-breaking crowd. Harris recorded 14 tackles and forced two fumbles in the contest. Chardin Hanna earned Women's Soccer Offensive Player of the Week after their contest against Mississippi State, winning 2-0 in Alabama A&M 6-2. Hanna's brace allowed Mississippi State to be shut out and then added a goal to USA's 6-2 win over Alabama A&M, giving her seven goals so far this season. Abby Baker earned Volleyball's Defensive Player of the Week. The Jaguars went 3-1 this past weekend in the Maroon Classic and defeated the Bulldogs since 1987 in the first win on Mississippi State's home floor. Mississippi State, Baker had 12 digs and four assists. Baker recorded 34 digs against Northwestern and had three assists in the contest. Baker also had 13 digs against Nickel State and in the final contest of the weekend, she recorded 22 digs and four assists against Memphis. And the last addition is South Alabama's cross country, Christoph Gaff. Gaff was the first place winner of the Mobile Azalea City Classic 8K with a time of 24-34, beating the second place a fellow teammate by 25 seconds. For more stories and updates, check out usavanguardsports.com. Well, oh, that's a lot of running and stuff for the football players. <laughs> I know. It's so, a lot of yards. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Ran all over them. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Well, that's it for this week on Vanguard On Air. Once again, I'm Jackie Roch. I'm Melissa Neaton. And I'm Bree Burrell. Stay tuned for Atmos Center weather, and we'll see you next week right here for the Vanguard On Air.